Um, for those of you that don't know, I do um, follow Ashes of Creation. I am participating in their alpha testing, which is not on right now. And I'm kind of wondering when the next phase of alpha testing is, because I feel like it's been over a year since the last one. Um, but Ashes of Creation is kind of like what a lot of people think is the next big MMO. And it looks like they've had some sort of, uh, some sort of update. So, um, people earlier in the stream were asked me to watch this video. So the uh, video is Ashes of Creation Alpha 2 Cyclops Combat Preview. No, not Asses of Creation. Relax. Cyclops Combat. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live. Hold on. Let's let's stop with this 480 garbage, please. Live stream in the world of Vera. I am joined today by three glorious developers. Actually, we have quite a few of our developers That's are pretty, uh, it? participating in today's live stream. I'm not going to go through everyone. You'll see their uh, usernames, their game handles on the top left side in our raid UI. Um, but like I have just just the game itself, like the UI, the party, like it it looks so close to have polish. Three and being amazing finished. developers who are joining us today like that have all taken such a part long way. in helping to design the Cyclops and the combat that goes around it. I know you guys in the community have been very excited to kind of see uh, today's demonstration. We're not gonna get too elaborate in the designs of the Cyclops right because we don't want to spoil it for you. But just as a it's disclaimer, like New World kinda, this... it, well, it's done on on Unreal Engine five which is a, an amazing engine that is, is relatively new. It's only been out like six months or something. But they originally designed the game on Unreal Engine 4 and then Unreal Engine 5 came out. And they were like, okay, we've got to, we've got to, you know, they basically um, ported everything over to Unreal Engine 5, which was way more powerful. And it's allowing them to fast pace the development of the game because Unreal Engine 5 allows you to do a lot of things a lot faster when it comes to world building. This is one of the very first world raid bosses that'll be available for players to participate in. So this is not super end game, uh, but it is going to give you some insight into how we're designing these encounters. And first up, we have one of our senior designers, Mr. Doug. How are you doing, Doug? Ah, good evening. I'm How's doing going, pretty Doug? well. I'm excited to show this off. Uh, we've been working on it for a while, and so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited for you guys to show it off too. I know you guys have been hard at work on this. Uh, Belfast Ashes is taking forever, six years in development. Yeah, but for MMOs, dude, that's not uncalled for. That uh, un, like, has it been six years that Ashes of Creation been? I thought it was like four, but anyways. Uh, New World is built on Lumberyard, which is a discontinued fork of uh, CryEngine. Um, I mean, there was a lot of issues that um, with New World, and a lot of it wasn't to do with their engine. Like CryEngine is not terrible, but the development team literally were in well over, way over their heads. Uh, don't get me started on New World. Like New World, they had a whole whack of people that were that they brought in into Amazon Game Studios that were put into positions that they never had before in previous like um, companies that they worked in. Like they were they were all in way over their heads, and that's why like the game kind of turned out the way it did. Um, the Lord of the Ring MMO will be made on a fork of Lumberyard called Azoth. Is that what they're doing? Uh, you know, when they announced that um, Lord of the Rings was going to be made by Amazon Game Studios, I was disappointed, man. I'm like, come on, man. Did you not just see what they did to New World? Like, I know New World is maybe better, but it's still, like, not done. Like, it is an instant F. Like, I was so, so disappointed. Like, Lord of the Rings could be an amazing MMO, and it's going to a company that had one of the biggest flops in recent MMO history. Like, just terrible decision. But probably money talks, right? This one and, and a lot of other creatures. And this is your first time joining us on the stream, isn't that right? That is correct. I have not streamed before. Super exciting. We have a stream virgin with us. Very cool. Um, we also have with us uh, one, one of our glorious uh, senior New technical World. designers, uh, Mr. Jason. How are you doing, Jason? Hey, how's it going? And you are the... Uh, this one's your baby, right? This Cyclops is, is, was kind of your design. Oh, well, Jason. Yeah, been plucking away at him for a while. 
<laughs> I remember the first time we, we chatted about this guy. Done. He had such a, a, a great kind of a, a premise for his backstory and, and his the design elements of it. I was I thought it was super cool. I love the detaching tree, which our, our viewers are going to see in a little bit. So I'm super. You know what I'm, I'm looking at? And I don't know, maybe there's just no wind, but nothing is moving. Like, one of the great things about um, Ashes of Creation is the weather in the game. And in, maybe there's just no wind, but there's nothing. Super excited that you have an opportunity to kind of talk with the community about this and get their take on, on some of these designs. He's moving. Um, and then so we have a, like, one of our... You know, he hasn't just like, it's not just a still picture. Regularly occurring uh, senior designers on the combat side, Mr. Trad. How you doing, Trad? Doing great, great. Good to be back as always. Yes, welcome. So we find ourselves here in the riverlands and it appears to be a winter time it it's looks beautiful nice. actually it is beautiful. I, I really like it so one of the first really things cool. i would love um to chat with you guys about is kind of how you set up this particular raid boss the cyclops um in the riverlands talk to me a little bit about his pathing like where does he live in the world what's his backstory just tell me look at these spiders him. that suddenly came out or maybe i didn't notice them before yeah, i think but... you could take this one jason Oh, um, so yeah, like um, the Cyclops, his name is Tumok, and um, they've named their uh, a long time ago. Um, he, you know, is from the land of Sujoma, and that's where like all the Cyclopses are from. Um, he decided it would be a good idea to try to align himself with the the ancients. You know what I think would be really kind of neat in Ashes of Creation? I'm trying to remember the name of the game that I played um, years ago. It was an MMO and they came, they actually came out with like novels and stuff like that. Like there was like, they'd actually had a, like writers develop like novels. I should go grab one. I can't remember which game it was from though, but they were actually quite good. So I, I it would be kind of neat um, if they that, that made it something. Vera. And um, he took some of his followers to follow in his and footsteps, like and uh, that didn't work out so well for him. Um, he's uh, he's he's the last remaining Cyclops of of his you know his people he took to try and uh, join the Ancients, and uh, his last the remaining ones. So of course, what are humans gonna do? We're gonna go kill him. Most of his people kind of exiled him for that, and they didn't want him back. So he's kind of all on his own, and and is has kind of paid for some of those mistakes of misaligning himself and oh, okay. okay so, so he's got a little bit of a backstory some pain in there you know maybe some betrayal and i guess he kind of turned against his fellow citizens of vera where are you guys at by the way i know i know we have a couple parties that are hanging back at the camp oh there you guys are why don't you come join me over here i want to i want to talk a little about you know kind of his pathing and i know uh, donsky you can buy into the alpha which i did i actually had a bunch of uh viewers donate so that i could pay for the alpha it was like 500 bucks um, but yes, I believe you can still actually like pay to get into the beta or something like that. Um, I played, I played the alpha on stream. Uh, they haven't announced when the next alpha phase is yet, but you never heard of it. Oh, Donsky, this is like the next big MMO. So that's what everyone thinks. Notice that there are also the some like wow winter killer. spiders over here or something. What is going on over here? Yeah, so there are some giant Probably spiders over here. Probably still a couple of years away from being released. One thing though. that we'd like to demonstrate today is that, you know, not every enemy in Vera is going to just behave like your simple, you know, aggro immediately beautiful. and beeline for you. Uh, the giant spider might not necessarily want to engage these scary looking adventurers. Um, so he's going to stand off and, you know, hope that you... Look at this. It, it actually looks like the spider is like going into like a defensive stance to warn him. You know, back away. And that is actually what it's doing. That is so creepy. I love the anim for this. So he's he's kind of not necessarily aggroing, but he's just like, don't come any closer. Like peacocking. <laughs> Back off. Get away from yeah, me. Yeah, he is kind of peacocking. I'm set to invulnerable because I want us to be able to kind of walk with the uh, Cyclops as we see him start to path here. Uh, but I, yeah, I, wild animals just, you know, not every single wild animal is going to immediately beeline for you. And so that's the kind of behavior we want to capture some more ambient behaviors. You might that's kind of be not interesting. expect to I, see I, in MMO. I didn't know that, that not, creatures not... hunting each other, you know, these kinds of animals you know, more believable aggro from you. wild animals. Maybe they that's just run away cool. from you or something. Yeah, I like them. That That's awesome. It adds a, an element of immersion, I feel like. So if you, know, if you do stay, if you do stay within their range or get too close to them, then, you know, they might defend themselves. So that's super cool. So talk to me a little bit about um, the Cyclops and its path and how you guys kind of determine 
um, you know, where this guy's going to roam and, and why it's an important aspect that the boss is kind of roaming through the woods, you know, or through the world. You can hear yeah, so we, we work with the, the world team to to decide what that path is going to be. And we want to make sure that the that there is something of interest. No, you know, there no, there, no matter where you Holy go, no I'm vulnerable just in case. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're, you're good. Yeah, no matter where you look, no matter what path you go down, that there's always a chance you're going to see something you didn't expect or you didn't see before. So. Oh, I love this guy. He's so massive. And I like how he kind of walks through the trees, triggering their destruction. Oh, <laughs> that's so <laughs> cool that he interacts with the environment like that. Yeah, definitely going to help you uh, to listen. You can just listen in the woods, and if, if he's patrolling around, you're going to hear him. Oh, my gosh. This guy's huge. Now, right, oh, oh, sorry. My bad. I, I thought for a second there he was going to aggro me. That's pretty cool, man. But just so you guys are aware in the stream, I've, I've set myself so to a, invulnerable like so that we can kind of just walk near him and see his massive nature. In the world that you can come across. And Doug, An Jason, talk anyways. to me a little bit about the inspiration for this guy as a character model. Like, what what were you guys, you know, working with the character teams to kind of... I noticed he has this massive tree. Talk to me a little bit about that element. Yeah, I think that was actually a little bit improvised, the design based on what the character came back with, Jason, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, when the character artists were making this, they had this cool idea of just having this giant tree weapon that a Cyclops would hold. And um, we took that idea and just kind of em embraced it, um, make it part of his character and the embellishments that he wears and um, using that to kind of inform what type of encounter that he might be. So we ended up making the tree like a, a pretty core part of it and it inf informs some of his combat abilities and um, phase transitions even in the fight. Yeah, I mean, it's a collaborative process. Sometimes it's design asking for something specific from art, and sometimes art is what informs the design, so. Oh, he looks great. The character did a great job with this. Do you know who, who's the character artist that worked on this? Was it Keith? I think it uh, might have been Keith. That's either Keith right. or could have been Jensi or somebody. Yeah, they did a great job, by the way. I mean, it looks, <clears throat> looks phenomenal. Just I know we have a couple pretty, of parties that are going to assist us with this particular fight. Talk to me a little bit about this encounter as a like, raid boss walks, you know what so, is the expectation like, from you know? the actual raid size that that you guys are anticipating for the design i think that's gonna tr that's gonna vary depending on the level of the raid obviously and then sort of how geared they are um but we're kind of aiming for somewhere between you know 16 and you know 32 um probably de depending again on level and equipment very cool so this guy's a really early kind of uh world boss and we, we want to introduce players early to the idea of these raids and by the way as we're kind of chatting about this those of you who are going to be helping us defeat this guy with our uh two parties if you want to start heading over to the arena we are waiting here for you i will set myself uh off of the gm and vulnerability here let me see um uh, Hey, wait, remember these commands. Hopefully I don't aggro him. Um, you know, it's important as we're down. talking about to kind of introduce players uh, into uh, what raiding really means in Ashes. And, and talk to me a little bit about kind of the general design approach that you take uh, with creating these types of encounters. You know, there are obviously phases. There's different elements in those phases that kind of change dynamically the, the way you want players to interact. What are we going to see here a little bit? Yeah, this is definitely like a, a, a more introductory rating experience, um, so it's not going to be too complicated, but I think there are some really interesting mechanics regardless, and I think Jason can talk about those. Um, yeah, so when I when I first started designing this guy, um, you know, we had uh, Trad and the other guys on the archetype team looking at, you know, forming the classes that people have been seeing over the, seeing over the live stream, and, you know, really before um, those kind of come to fruition, um, and knowing like you know what the full abilities are and everything we i started the design with you know the core trinity in mind um so the roles are oh, very look, obvious um you can see the whole will party tank, of them coming healers up will here heal now. and dps will um try to take down the targets that they need to and starting from there i try to um keep that in mind not not to uh oh. there's your mage shield uh donsky that's a he, he's sort of a mage like character but that's a mage shield we're complicated so that in the game um they always have that like individual training idea blizzard. amongst the different mechanics 
Um, yeah, so we got some classic staples in here. We've got, you know, ads that off tanks are going to have to peel off um, and, and crowd control that's going to need blink. to be applied to those ads. We've got priority targets that are going to pop up that need to be killed. We've got, you know, damage that's going to be unavoidable so that, you know, even with the expert group that can dodge all of his avoidable attacks, you know, the healers are still going to have work to do uh, to keep everyone. The blizzard, though, is an AOE around the caster, though, so you can't target it like you can in, in uh, World of Warcraft, but alive. Very cool. Very cool. Love it. <clears throat> you guys will notice, obviously, on the... Uh the stream that there have been some updates to a little bit of the um, uh, nameplates that Colby and the UI team have uh, implemented, as well as uh, some of the targeting plates as well. But who do we have as our tank today? That would be me. Doug will be Ooh, tanking. Doug will be tanking. All right. All right. Very cool. And then we also have, um, <clears throat> I'll be playing as a mage, but um, I will be trying to capture some good uh, shots of the encounter to a degree. Trad, what are you playing? I am a mage as well, just like you. Oh, okay, very cool. And then how about you, Jason? I'm playing yeah, the you, cleric. If, if you've never seen this before, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably already know, but the, there's 64 different types of classes. So you have eight base classes, and then they mix with um, eight um, other classes. So you can have like, um, like an, uh, a mage and a, an assassin or something like that mixed together into one class. It's really interesting. It will be interesting to see whether or not they can make it work. Um, 64 classes. They've already said um, that, you know, things are not going to be able to be perfectly balanced. So um, it would be impossible to balance 64 classes, but that's what they're working with right now. So you could have like a, 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 like a, a cleric and a rogue or something like that and you know have so i don't know what what the class would be called but kind of a mix between those two classes so you could have a mage that has stealth for for example which is kind of cool nice well doug i don't want to stand in the way of your greatness so please by all means all right, sir this, you may commence fight. when this battle ready. all right leroy jenkins leroy, leroy jenkins. let's do this yeah try not to let me die jason yeah, no promises. Oh, uh, he's an angry Tumok. Oh my god, that looks like it hurts. Yeah, if you don't block that, you get smushed. So he's kicking. Oh, I love his animation. He's, so uh, talk to me a little bit about the some of these attacks. What, are, what do you got going on here, oh. Jason and Doug? So, so one of his attacks, he did, he drops the tree like... um like lengthwise on the ground and just slams it down the other one that one that he just did he like literally just like took the stump of the tree and just a little bit about some head. of these Watch attacks this. what are, what do you got going on here jason and doug <laughs> um, oh he charges so yeah, with his it first phase well. um here he has a, a lot of uh physical attacks but he also employs a lot of attacks using his tree like we see there with the roots hitting us uh, and right now you can see he's also he's he's um pulling some fungus out of the tree and using that to heal himself. Um, oh. um, he has a tank spike attack where he smashes the, the tree into the tank that Doug was blocking earlier. Um, and generally does a lot of like AOE splash damage. Oh, Steve, you just got charged. Me other like, melee will want right to avoid over. not stand, stand together. Yeah, he's not oh. a particularly complex uh, raid boss, but he's a great example of, the, of sort of what we want to do with large creatures and ashes. Having them interact with the environment, having that that camera shake, that you know those you knockdowns that? Like, that make it feel. What he said when he said that they pull the moss out, and that's what that's how he heals himself. You can see him grab the bottom of the trunk. Hold on. Interact with the environment, having oh, that, that camera it? shake, that you know those knockdowns that make it feel like he is here, and he is crushing you. <laughs> These mages doing a lot of standing around. That's what mages do, man. That's what mages do. The guy that's um. The oh, main he looks, oh my god, he keeps just he's the charging owner of the company, there. Donsky. So he's just trying to get video. I'm just barely missing him. Show people. Now, talk to me a little bit about kind of the raid boss designs. Like, you guys are working with multiple stages. I noticed that right now he's just kind of, you know, roaming around. He has different targets on his hate list. Tell me, like, what's your general philosophy? How did you guys approach Wait, this? Where's his hate list? Yeah, so I think um, I just ended this a, a little bit earlier, but 
we designed this boss pretty early on when a lot of the classes were still their sort of nascent form. So we really just wanted to focus on the whole, the Trinity, you know, making sure that everyone has a, a purpose in this raid, a, a role, whether you're someone who's focused on CC, whether you're a tank, a healer, a DPS, you know, giving those classic mechanics to give everybody a job in the, in the raid. Like right now, for instance, he's put this tree down and there are going to be um, these healing caps that appear. And this is like Freya that, that you know, uh, trees up, trees up. <laughs> you got to kill the tree because it's healing them. Here. And those are going to be a priority objective for DPS to take down before they grow to full size, because if they do, he's going to go over, he's going to stomp them, and he's going to get healed for a huge percentage of his health. Sort wow. of similar to Freya. So we got to take this tree out <clears throat> because he's just going to keep healing. Yeah, and you definitely got to switch over to those healing caps when they appear. There's. That's super cool. So he, so he heals off of the mushrooms as well? Yeah, and as a player, if you destroy them, or even if he stomps on them, if you happen to be nearby when they blow up, um, you I can get that I saw that tree falling well. down. So I thought he was going to pick it up. If you're taking some damage from the thorns it. from the tree, or you got hit by one of his large, uh, you know, stomp attacks, you know, you might have a chance to get healed up if you run over to those mushrooms before they blow up. Okay, we almost have this tree down. Come on, guys, focus it down. Focus major DPS on the tree. Let's try to kill this thing. You know it's what I will done. say? Get it, get it before he picks it up. Do you, do you guys remember what the videos, and for those of you watching on YouTube, do you guys remember the, um, how the videos uh, looked when the, uh, I guess the walking didn't look smooth? Like the people moving around looks a lot smoother than it did before. Um, obviously, I mean, the game's been in, uh, in development now for like several years, but it, it used to look really bad where you'd take a step and it would look like every step was just sliding as you move forward. It looked really kind of clunky, but it looks a lot better now when, when people are moving around. Yes, everything, release it all. Oh, well done. I think the screen shaking, you can turn uh -oh. it off, Donsky. Oh He's my it now. God, why is he so mad? It's supposed to mimic him like shaking the ground. It's not like when you break his weapon. What the heck? I mean, who would? <laughs> you know, like he, when he's thumping on the ground or whatever. Jason, where'd you get the idea for that, for the kind of tree totem? Um, a lot of that came from the uh, original uh, design that we got from character just art. Left it, people? That. We really enjoyed the way the that it synergized with his look. So we wanted to employ the use of the tree as, as like a core part of his uh, encounter. Um, oh, we ended cool. up using it as like a magical, like a magical tree where he gets a lot of his abilities. But without that, he seems to get really mad, and his more primal, cyclops giant nature comes back, as we see here. Ah, wow, that's cool. So talk to me about those kind of slams that he's doing. And also, I noticed like as he's running around, the trees are falling, the stone obelisks are kind of getting destroyed. Is there intent for these kind of environmental um, hazards to exist as well as part of the raid design? Yeah, I want to see grab for a tree our large and creatures, start, you know, like, cyclopses, dragons, things around, like that. Man. We we want to make sure that the world feels like dynamic and something. it's reacting to their big size. You know, if a huge, you know, twenty meter tall beast is walking through the woods and not knocking down a single tree, that just doesn't feel believable. So we want to make sure that you know. You're going to hear that, and that's going to be a way you can know in the distance there's something that you want to go and investigate. That is super cool. I died, but I'm on my way back. <laughs> the spell effects are getting a lot better, too. Yeah, like those those to slams hurt to really be, bad. But... Yeah, oh. um, one of the aspects of the, the, the phases in this fight is actually that uh, he has those healing abilities when he has his totem tree, his nature magic, but uh, and he is more primal when he's in this phase. As a result, you can take him down a little quicker when he's enraged, but it's also going to be a lot more incoming damage for your healers to work through. So, um, depending on your raid composition, your you know equipment level, you might want to sustain longer in that earlier phase, even if it takes a while through all that healing, um, because if you push him too early, uh, you, you might just wipe. Oh, I love it, guys. Here he goes again. Oh, no, 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 I was getting crushed there. I was right under his fists. 
Oh, this poor guy. That is actually really cool, man. Look at him. His little eye. Wow, that was very cool. Well done, guys. That, that was is, awesome. Does he have any that loot? That was actually really good. Can like we loot him? The, the other ones that we've seen, the other <gasps> world boss ones. Sword of the Briar Home, a longbow, a shortbow, and a mace. Ooh, well, very I'm gonna, nice. I'm look at well, the, that was uh, a lot of fun. Very well done. I want to look at the uh, stats. So 46 physical damage rating. I'm, I'm assuming that's just how much damage you do if you swing it. Oh, no, actually, maybe it, it, maybe it is actually a melee staff. Oh, and a mace. Ooh, very nice. Well, well that yeah, was a it, lot of fun. Very well done. Look... I thought that that was very cool. Guys, <clears throat> as you guys are watching this, remember, obviously, this is one of the earliest world bosses in Ashes of Creation that you'll have an opportunity earliest. to Imagine encounter just getting your feet wet and what the raid like boss like. uh, system is going to look like. We have a lot of fun designs that are intended uh, with a lot of different creatures. <clears throat> but give us your feedback. What are the raid bosses you enjoyed in other games that you've played? What about the mechanics? What about the phases uh, that you thought were were cool what did you enjoy seeing here today um and what would you like to see in the future uh but otherwise trad jason doug thank you guys for joining us and giving us a little sneak peek under the hood of the encounter design uh, particularly as it relates to tumok the wretched i thought that that was that was super cool a lot of fun um and i look forward to seeing more from you guys in the future but with that being said uh i would like to thank you all and we will see everyone back on stream here in just a moment. That was Bye, good, everybody. man. That was, uh, hey. you can really see that they've come a long ways in the last, um, you know, whatever it is, the last couple of years anyways, especially since they've swapped over to Unreal Engine 5. It has made a massive difference, it appears, in how fast they're able to come up with this content. And it looks so much smoother than it had looked um, like a year ago at this time. So hopefully we get it in the next couple of years because it looks like it could be really, really a fantastic game. And I love the fact that the company is not owned by some, you know, mega gaming studio that is demanding that it be pushed out early, you know, super early. Like they've, they've got time to work on it. They're not under any sort of time constraints that we, uh, as far as we can tell. So Hopefully it's a game that'll be done right, but it, it looks, it's starting to look like it's really coming along. I'm actually really excited for Ashes of Creation again. I know I stopped kind of paying attention to it for several months because there just wasn't really a lot coming out, but it looks like they're starting to come up with some new content and stuff like that again. So anyways, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be playing Ashes of Creation, if you're following it, et cetera, et cetera, and if you're excited. Um, those of you that are watching on YouTube and or and if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, if you want to talk to me live, you can talk to me on Twitch or on YouTube. I stream, I dual stream live. Um, you can either subscribe to my YouTube channel or come join me on Twitch at twitch.tv/aladar. We'll see you guys in the next one.